NASCAR and Goodyear officials made it clear on Friday they do not expect tire issues to plague the weekend. Tell me as a crew chief, when you're going literally from day to night, is that that big of a change? Can you bring any of your notes from the last time you raced there? You know what it's like to be in victory lane. You also know what it's like to have to wait to come back here. What's that journey been like for you? And despite the added benefits to a win, neither are worried yet. In five races, yeah. they have zero wins and only one top five. By 48 standards, that's not successful. Donovan, let's get right to it. You said what you said about NASCAR drivers and them not maybe being athletes. Were you surprised by the reaction from NASCAR Nation? Finally, I have something in common with Jimmy Johnson. We both set personal bests at our 5K on the same day. How do you walk that, that fine line, and is there a fine line of uh, whether you get involved or not? And this will be the first time the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series cars use the group qualifying system. It's just kind of where it sits now. Right, how's your eye? Uh, it's okay, you got me good though. These two drivers, they both have wins, which means they have little to lose in terms of getting to the chase. Do you expect this feud to continue? No more tandems really like we used to see a few years ago, but how important are teammates? Getting the, all those SHR cars together, all the RCR cars together. But that issue, tires, is still splitting opinions in the garage. We're concerned this weekend, for sure. Concerned, Joey Logano says, because this weekend's race at Texas Motor Speedway is the first at an intermediate track since Fontana two weeks ago. During that weekend, a number of teams suffered left side tire failures, including both Team Penske cars. Goodyear addressed the issue on Friday. Historically, we haven't seen a lot of that, so, so I don't have a lot of concerns uh, above and beyond anything we would have in a normal weekend. They maintain the tire failures they saw in Fontana were brought on by teams running on less than recommended air pressure in an effort to gain grip. Jeff Gordon would like that recommended air pressure to be enforced. All they're doing is asking for us to exploit it and push it. If somebody goes out there, goes faster than us, and we find out that they're a pound lower on the left, then we're going to go a pound lower. NASCAR officials say they will not enforce minimum air pressures, saying it's up to teams to get their cars to the finish line. We're just the governing body. They're the competitors. They got a lot on the line, and, uh, you know, they, they they're, they're the best at pushing it to the limit, and they'll adjust accordingly. Matt Kenseth agreed, saying the issue needs to be left in the team's hands. They need to leave us tools to, to work with. I think it's up to us. I mean, if we see there's a problem and it's something that we're doing, whether it's speed or not, you still have to, uh, you still have to finish the race to be able to win it. Late in Friday's practice, Kurt Busch crashed after a left rear tire failure, forcing him to a backup car. As of Saturday, Goodyear was still investigating the incident but did not expect it to be a widespread issue. Well, Kevin Harvick was one of those drivers affected by a tire issue two weeks ago in Fontana. In Saturday's final practice, this car ran 47 laps. His crew chief, Rodney Childers, told me that was something of an endurance test, so they'll have an idea of how the tire will perform during the race, hoping to avoid further issues. At Texas Motor Speedway, I'm Alan Cavana for NASCAR.com. Start and park. It's a controversial term in NASCAR where teams start a race with no intention of ever making it to the finish. But as the numbers show so far this season, start and park may be a thing of the past. Phil Parsons Racing is off to its best start ever in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. It's a team of eight full-time employees, limited race cars, and driver Josh Wise. Parson says the improvements have come after a decision he made with his crew chief and team in the offseason. We have to figure out a different way to do this so we can race. We, none of us want to start and park anymore. Just We weren't going to do it. A start and park is how Parsons' team and a number of others survived in recent years. But that approach has nearly disappeared in 2014. NASCAR does not keep start and park statistics, but in the first eight races of the season, only two drivers have ended a race after 100 laps or fewer for reasons not due to a crash or engine failure. At the same point in past seasons, that number was as high as 33 cars. So why is the practice all but stopped? Parson says as racers, no one enjoys start and parking, so in the off season, he worked on cutting costs and creating partnerships that made running full races possible. NASCAR also changed its payout structure in 2013, providing more incentive to race for the best finish possible. You can't, you can't really make any money starting and parking now. So, so some of the people that were just there to make money, uh, it, that, that's gone away. Last season, Parsons' team completed just 34% of the races it ran in. 
so far this season. That number is 97%. Michael McDowell drove for Parsons last season, but this year he moved over to Levine Family Racing, another team that's made the decision to run full races each time it's at the track. It's, it's nice knowing when you show up that you're going to run you know, competitively and you're going to have all the tires and a pit crew and all the stuff that you can easily take for granted. The team's owner, Bob Levine, told us he used the start and park method in past years for research and development. What the team learned then helped them get to the point where they are now. He says a new partnership with Team Penske is also improving performance and more incentive to race longer. Last year, LFR completed 40% of its laps. So far this year, they're at 90%. Both teams made it clear that start and parking was never about making money, a stigma that came with choosing to end a race early. They said any money earned was an investment toward the future. A lot of us caught a lot of flack as, you know, we're a start and park team, or start and park driver, and, and all these things, but it's the process we had to go through to be able to race now. Parsons called it a means to a beginning. We wouldn't be here, honestly, if it hadn't been for the fact that we were able to start and park some. And it was lucrative enough to keep the doors open. The teams we talked to say the plan is to keep improving. They say the more laps they run leads to more exposure, which they hope leads to more sponsorship. For NASCAR.com, I'm Alan Kavana.